This time on Find It, Fix It. Hi, this is Michael Street, and today is all about older homes. If you're buying or selling an older home and want to get an upper hand on the negotiations, this episode is for you. And this episode is chock full of all kinds of legendary problems. And I just couldn't resist. I had to show it to you. So just take a few minutes, and by the end of this episode, you're really going to have a good understanding of how to find the major items that can be wrong. You can either list them in your seller's disclosure or know how to find them for yourself through a walkthrough. Come with me. Hi, it's Michael again. Faulty roofing installation. It is buggy and moving the entire thing. Just one nasty bug. This really is the best part of what I do. Howdy doody. <laughs> this is sloppy yo. Today we're going down under. I'm not talking to Australia. Going places that no one else goes to save you money. The question I always get is how do you age a roof? Well, it's kind of tough uh, to find out. A uh, good way is to just have the insurance agent come out, uh, the, the seller's insurance agent come out and uh, do an, an uh, evaluation of the roof and they can tell you whether or not it can be repaired. They're gonna cover it or and then in which case the seller will just pay their deductible and the roof gets repaired or they'll provide in writing that the roof is just fine and in which case you can send that a letter to your next insurance company and it'll help you uh, get insurance on the roof. You want to know how to age your roof. I get the question all the time. It's really about the asphalt fleck on the roof. And you see this silvery type shimmery area on this roof? That is missing asphalt fleck. And it's enough to show the fiberglass below it, the shingles below it. So take a look really closely at the shingles. It's all you need to do to determine if the roof's damaged. You see how much asphalt fleck is missing here um, and all over the field at the house. You can do this from the ladder. You don't necessarily have to do this from the rooftop, but it's there. That asphalt fleck uh, protects the roof from the UV damage. If you're still wondering how to age the roof, it's uh, usually about 15 to 18 years that roofs last here in South Texas. And so you just, how old is the house? And take divide that by 18 years, and you can determine how many roofs um, that the the house has had and if it's an old roof and the house is you know 19 20 years old then you know that that roof is probably the first roof um, if it's a newer roof and it's a 20 year old house then it probably is on its second roof because roofs last 15 18 years you follow me how to do that it's just a real quick math and it's never foolproof but it's a good way to at least get started Next up is exterior walls, and I'm gonna show you how to look for termites. Come on. A lot of the homes here in South Texas have a brick exterior with some type of what looks like wood siding. But in reality, it's just paperboard uh, covered with some paint, and uh, it is really susceptible to water damage. And I wanna show you a few areas so that you know how to check for this cheap, fibrous material. And I also wanna show you how to suspect, or how to spot termites. So let's take a look. Now it's easy to see that this wallboard is damaged here but what you really want to look for is the type of material it's made out of and you can tell here that this is just like a paper fibrous paper board and it doesn't hold up very well to moisture especially if you've got any kind of leak um, maintain you have to maintain it with paint uh, really well and a lot of times what isn't done is the bottom is not maintained with paint just the top and what uh, the water rolls down the wall and drips off the edge and since the edge is not painted it just gets damaged very easily the next part I want to show you is a section over here in the fencing you know kind of how to look for termites especially up near the house you're looking for these little galleries in the fence you know Pretty easy to tell that that was a termite gallery at some point and then dig in the ground in, in any mulch around the edge of the house to look for termites I didn't see any here maybe they've had some kind of um, termite remediation uh, but that's what we're looking for and then I'm going to show you in the house uh, how you can uh, check to see if there's been a past repair come with me past termite remediation and it's pretty easy look here behind the sink in the kitchen or at the electrical panel in the garage, and you'll see target pest, subterranean termites back in 96. There's a couple of tags here. Real easy way to tell there's been termites. And then you can put in your negotiations, have a termite repair done. 
So that exterior material that I'm talking about is that fibrous kind of paperboard, doesn't last, should probably all be replaced. And then you're looking for termites and the wood fencing, you're looking in uh, weep holes near the bottom of the wall and uh, looking for those data cards under the sink and uh, in the electric box to know if you have termites or have had termite repairs in the past. If you've had a termite uh, remediation in the past, it's best just to go ahead and have another one done. Just have it sprayed again and that way you can maintain uh, keeping the termites out of the house and it'll also kill any that are there. So let's move on next to the windows. Those, these are single pane windows and you'll notice that the gasket uh, is, is missing here and that this window just needs some repairs to be replaced. We've got a couple of broken windows at this property too, but um, as you can see here, but um, coming in side, I wanna show you this, uh, the blown gaskets on the windows and what it looks like. This um, window here has got a blown gasket and this one's easy to tell. Some aren't so easy to tell. Um, and let me see if I have an idea. See this, uh, this, these markings here, sometimes it shows up as little spots in the windows, like, uh, like a paint, paint spatter. Uh, but this is uh, the signs, the beginning signs of seal loss in this window. Um, these little paint spot kind of looking things here, um, it's the beginning signs. And then, so eventually that window will look like this window. And that's what you're looking for, paint spatter-like spots that give you an indication that the seals have gone bad. And the seal is, is raising out of the window here, and that's a good indication of what's about to take place. Chimney leaks can be a big uh, issue at older homes, and you don't really know a lot of times if the chimney chase outside is bad because you don't have a way to get up there and see it. Well, the way to check if your chimney chase or the chimney cap is bad uh, on the outside is to come inside and look at the chimney box, the firebox. And if you see rust uh, and damage around the firebox, chances are there's a leak up at the top. Go on over to the chimney and then take a look up in the chimney. And you notice that there's a lot of rust here and you can operate the flue by pulling on that little lever. But the fact that this has rust all around it is telling you that the chimney chase and, and cap outside are probably damaged. A leaking and damaged firebox and chimney can be a big expense, especially when you're talking about fixing the chase up in the attic and then going here for this uh, metal firebox here, pulling that out of the wall, repairing all the uh, finished work it can be expensive. But a quick way to test is just look inside and see if it's rusty and you'll have saved yourselves, you know, maybe even thousands of dollars. So next up is the things you've been waiting for, the big expenses, the attic with the rodents, the HVAC system and the foundation. I've got some super things to show you. Let's go ahead into the attic. Here we go. A lot of the houses that I inspect have rodents and it just depends on how bad they are. How much damage have they done to the insulation, to the wiring? It can be a big expense. So I'm gonna take you into this attic and you're gonna see uh, you know, just thousands of damage in this attic uh, with the insulation, et cetera. So let's take a look real quick. Okay, heading up into the attic here, you're gonna see uh, Kind of the damage that they've taken here. See, look at all the trails in the attic insulation right here. This is the you know rodents kind of working their way back and forth in the insulation, and they have you know, really damaged this ductwork here. Now a lot of this uh, ductwork is damaged because it's just old, and that plastic sheathing comes off. Eventually, there's nothing to hold the insulation together anymore, and it just comes off the. Uh, ductwork that's inside of there, but you'll notice that this this attic has just had a ton of damage. So we know that the ductwork is damaged, that the insulation is damaged up there. Uh, what's the remedy? Well, that ductwork is pretty much a loss. You're going to need to replace that, and you just tell by sticking your head in the attic. You can look around, and you know you know pretty much that that insulation around that ductwork needs to be replaced, and it's a total vent. Uh, replacement ductwork replacement but the insulation is damaged and you know you don't have to necessarily remove all the insulation but at least get it treated um, and then you can blow in more insulation or you know worst case if it's got a lot of rodent you know feces up there uh, then you'll need to have it removed and replaced but uh, in this attic i didn't see a lot of wire damage and uh, wire damage can be very expensive to replace so you'll want to take a look at that too uh, let's go over to the um, ac system and i'll show you how to test it uh, to see if it's working properly Okay, AC systems are really easy to test. Um, you want to get a thermometer like this and just um, stick it up here in the plenum 
and also in the return air area down here and subtract the difference. Um, it should be anywhere from 18 to 22 degrees difference and you'll tell if the AC system is working. A lot of times I'll go ahead and, and jump to do the um, leak detection test and I can tell if any Freon is leaking. A heater's the same way, just make sure that you're getting 20 or so degrees, 25 degrees of heat over 100 degrees and you can test that with the same thermometer. You can get these at Home Depot anywhere and that's how you test the heater in a house, the quick version. So you can test the AC and the heat by just sticking a thermometer up here in the plenum and even down here in the vent and uh, just subtract the difference. The AC in this place, uh, I didn't even test because it was way too cold today. So in that case, I would put in the, uh, I would open the cabinet up and test it with the leak detection tester uh, to see if we have any leaking Freon. Um, in this case, uh, the heater only worked for about 10 minutes and then it shut off and it wasn't giving me over 100 degrees of heat and that's what you're looking for in the uh, heater system. So just test it. This could be a big fix um, and you just get an AC guy out here now to, to review this thing and make sure uh, that it's either repaired or replaced or what have you. The next up is the one you've been waiting for and it is the foundation repair. Um, I found a major foundation problem at this house and also we tested the pipe, the sewer pipe, um, for uh, blockage or drain problems. And man, we found some big deal stuff. And so I'm going to show you all about that. So let's go ahead. One of the biggest cost items at a house to repair is the foundation. But you never really know the severity just by looking at cracks. So this crack here, for instance, is, a, is an angle crack, and that's an indication that there's foundation settling. Uh, there's a couple others here, uh, but you never really know the severity of it until you use some type of um, tool, some type of level, something like that. And one thing that I always use is the uh, precision altimeter, which is a fancy level with a computer on the end of it. And in this house, I tested it and revealed an almost six inches, actually over six inches of settlement. And let me show you that tool, what it looks like. Um, so that you can uh, get what you need uh, to tell if a foundation is damaged. Like I said, the cracks in the walls don't really give you an indication of the uh, severity of the foundation problem, but this machine does. This is called a precision altimeter, and basically it's a, uh, it's a fancy computer that tells us how much the foundation is settled. So I dragged the line here across the foundation, and in this house in particular, I found you know six inches of settlement. And that's a pretty severe settlement. There's some other symptoms uh, that we're looking for um, that kind of indicated there was a foundation problem, like this roof, uh, the ceiling, drywall lifting, uh, obviously the cracks at the doors and the windows, you know, some pretty severe cracking. You've got also some cracks in the floors um, as well, kind of opening up. When you have foundation settling that's this severe, your worst problem really isn't uh, repairing the settling foundation. It's actually repairing the drain lines underneath the slab. Um, since those drain lines, four inch pipes, in most cases are, are run underneath the slab, inside of the slab, poured in the slab, uh, they can break. When you have a settlement and it'll crack the pipe or maybe uh, tree limbs and those sorts of things can crack the pipes as well. So in this house, uh, I went ahead and did a hydrostatic test. Um, it's a, uh, a non-pressurized test um, that can tell me if the drain line is is leaking or not and I want to show you that. You basically find the clean out cap and then uh, place a balloon basically down here in the drain line and it blocks the uh, water from passing and you can see that at the back of the balloon there's no water passing and it has blocked the entire drain line. By running the hydrostatic test, I'm blocking the drain line. And while I'm running water, um, now it's been over an hour that I've been running water into the drain line. And since it's blocked, it has nowhere to go, right? So that water ideally would back up into the house, into the lowest part of the house. So whether at a toilet or at a uh, drain pan of the shower, I should see the water start to back up. And then over the, uh, you know 20 or 30 minutes, watch and see how much the water would sink and that would tell me if the drain line is leaking or not. So come and take a look. The water has been running in this bathroom now for over an hour and it has not yet backed up into the drain line of the shower, which is the lowest place in this house. And what that tells me is that the water is just leaking underneath the house, going whichever place it wants to go and not down the drain pipe. 
So as you can see, knowing uh, how severe your foundation problem is will help you determine if you know there's a, a slab leak with a plumbing break and this can be pretty substantial repairs not only do you have to repair the foundation here which could be 10 15 20 thousand dollars but you're also now digging under the house to repair the drain line and that itself could be 10 grand so it's a, a big problems at this place and i uh, hope that this serves to help you houses that you're buying to find the major problems that's all for this episode of Find It, Fix It. I hope we've blown your eyes wide open on the things that can exist on these older homes. If you've liked the video, like, subscribe, and place a comment if you have questions below, and I do my best to answer every single comment to help you on a house you're about to buy or sell. And that's all for today. Going places that no one else goes to save you money is what we do, and I hope we've helped you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining me here on Find It, Fix It. We'll see you soon. service he really cares y'all need to get Mike on your team